Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to build on what we started yesterday and start having a look at some co-interior angles in parallel lines. As always, it's important to remember that the word co-interior just refers to the position of two lines crossed by a transversal, um, but we have those special properties for these when they are co-interior. Before we start, what I do want to have a look at is um, you trying to use the information that we already learned yesterday to find the values of x and y. If you haven't already done that, pause the video and give it a go now. Okay, so there's two different things that we can be looking for here. Um, yesterday we were looking at things that were in the relative same position or in an f shape to find us some corresponding angles so this is something that we didn't mention yesterday actually but we can have um, this f shape to help us to find these things that are in the same relative position this one is upside down and um, but it is still an f shape or we can talk about the fact that we're in the same relative position from that vertex this gives us that x is 20 degrees because it's a corresponding angle so corresponding angles are equal. There's kind of two different ways to then find y. We could use the fact that x and y are vertically opposite to each other. But what I'm going to do is use something a little bit different and go back to the beginning of yesterday's lesson. And I'm going to trap that 20 on the inside of a z shape, which then does the same for the y. And that gives us that y is 20 degrees as well because alternate angles are equal. Remember, those properties only hold in those parallel lines, but we know they're parallel from these symbols here. What I want to do today is build up that um, kind of sense that we already have and show us some co-interior angles. Co-interior angles make this almost kind of C shape between your parallel lines and they are the two that are on the inside here. You could do the same on this side with its second transversal and it's these two angles here. I'm hoping you can see from the numbers here that their special property is going to mean that these co-interior angles sum to 180 degrees. So they're a little bit different to the two we've done before, but actually they come from the same place. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in some of the other facts that we know already and show you where this rule comes from. In this case, I'm going to start from this 50 degrees here. That 50 degrees can do one of two things. I'm going to go with a corresponding angle here for 50 degrees. And then because of angles on the straight line, this is 180 take 50 or 130. I'm going to do something slightly different on the other side so we can see another way that this would work using the things that we already know. If I was to take this 70 degree angle as my start point and use a Z, I can have a 70 degree angle in here. That 70 degrees works with that 110 to make angles on a straight line here. Or 180 takes 70, which gives us that 110 that we've got here. All of these things are incredibly linked to one another. I'm going to just draw us a, transver uh, a set of parallel lines with a transversal so we can explore these links a little bit further. I'm going to start with an angle that I'm going to pop in at this point here and I'm going to call this angle, angle A. What I'm going to do now is try and fill in any angles that I possibly can that I know are the same with the letter A. If you want to try this for yourself, give this video a pause now. Okay, so let's make a start by looking at a corresponding angle. The corresponding angle on the other vertex is this one here. However, we could also have used our Z to help us to find an alternate angle, A, here. 
which then has a corresponding angle down here. Or we could have used vertically opposite angles to get these two pairs. Annoyingly, that does not help us with any of these things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to label this one as B. In the same way as before, I can get a corresponding B here. I can get an alternate exterior B or here, or I can use vertically opposite. And then I can get another corresponding or vertically opposite B here. So corresponding using that one or vertically opposite using that one. Therefore, I've only really on each transversal got two different angles. These two different angles come together in two kind of different ways we can view this. We can either have that 180 is A plus B because in every sense of a straight line we've got an A and a B here and one here on those uh, on that vertex on the straight line or we could view them this way an A and a B or this way all the ones underneath an A and a B and an A and a B. The other way we can think of this is that um, the two A's and the two B's around the whole point are 360 degrees. This one though leads to a very very nice um, formula which tells us that B is 180 degrees minus A which we already knew because they are angles on a straight line. This result's really important, but we can use any of these um, corresponding alternate and co-interior to find out this information. The co-interior ones, remember, is the 180, whereas the other two are the ones that are equal. Actually, if you know corresponding and alternate, co-interior isn't necessarily necessary, but again, it's one of those efficiencies that we've come up with um, as mathematicians to get straight to that point of being able to say that these two add to 180, as opposed to having to do two or maybe even three steps. So your corresponding is an F shape. Alternate angles are in a Z shape and your co-interiors are in a C shape. These are your shortcuts. Do not name them after them. We are looking for corresponding, alternate, and co-interior as our explanations. Coming back to co-interior then, what we needed to do is now identify just two pairs. Two pairs of um, co-interior angles. It might be worth at this point saying that as mathematicians we've been notoriously efficient again and this actually means consecutive interior angles. That means on the inside. This is the reason there is only two pairs because there's only a possible four things on the inside of these parallel lines. So that means automatically we can disregard Q, P, W and V and we're only looking at R, S, T and U. Consecutive meaning one after the other and actually we need these to be on the same side of the transversal. So if we draw a C shape we can either have S and T or we can do a backwards C shape to have R and U. So S and T sum to 180 and R and U sum to 180. One of the other brilliant things we can find out because we know those properties from before is that R and T are the same angle and so are U and S. So actually now this should feel really obvious that these are the same things, they're just in the opposite swapped over order. So you are asked to finish up by looking at these two questions. If you haven't already given these a go, can you make sure that you have paused the video now to do so? Okay, 
I'm going to start by looking for, as this is my co-interior angles lesson, a co-interior angle by drawing a C shape in here. That means that U and this 136 add up to 180. So U is a 180 minus 136 or 44 degrees. And that's because they are co-interior and they sum to 180. There are two different ways I could then find V. V is on a straight line with U, so actually I could almost reverse the calculation I've just done and I could do 180 minus 44 to get 136 degrees. Um, I can do that because we've got angles on a straight line. Or I could draw an F shape and I can see that in the relative same position to here, um, I've got a corresponding angle. And we know that those are equal. So either way we get that V is 136 degrees for one of those two reasons. Let's just put a star there so we can remember. The next question is very very similar. Again we've got a situation where we can use co-interior angles here. So X is um, 180 minus 147. So 33 degrees. Again, this is because of co-interior angles. The only difference then comes from Y. There's lots of different ways we can find Y, but the most efficient at this stage might be to look at vertically opposite angles here. So Y is also 33 degrees because it's vertically opposite. And they're equal. There are lots and lots of rules that you will have had to remember to do all of these questions. So as a starting point for today, please have a look at the Hegarty clip 482. If there are any other rules that you need to kind of brush up on, like the angles on the straight line or vertically opposite, do a search in that Hegarty maths bar at the top um, and I'm sure that you will find it. And then maybe push yourself to try some of the problem solving angles questions. There's lots with algebra um, and lots and lots that I've got multiple different ways of solving them um, on there. Don't be afraid to just fill in any angles that you can possibly find using any of the rules you remember. My default is always to look for alternate angles first because they are my favourite. I don't know why, but they are. It might be that your favourite is corresponding, so you always look for the corresponding angles first, or that your favourite is co-interior, so you always look for those first. Whatever you're doing, just make sure you're writing down your reasons for that to make sure you get the marks in the exam. There are multiple methods that will get those marks. Once you've got 70% on this task and maybe a few of the harder ones, then it's time to rest up for the weekend and get yourself ready for next week. If you've got any issues, give us an email. Otherwise, Stay safe.